Welcome to the Stock Report, where we take a look back at this past week of college football and see what draft eligible prospects help their stock and hurt their stock. What's crack lacking? It's your boy, Bro Schmo. Just in case you did not know, so go ahead, become bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content as always. Let me know what you think in the comment section below where we had that nice, uh, beautiful football discourse. Let's go ahead, get into this sucker with Jabbar Muhammad out of Washington. This was the game we did during the watch along. Oregon State, Washington was a banger of a game. And Muhammad had one phenomenal game. He allowed no receptions, had two interceptions, three pass breakups, Felt like he was just making plays all over the place for the defense. Even had like, I think, uh, a few tackles in there as well. Uh, it was just a phenomenal game from him. He's coming in at 5'10", 183, but he has really good length. And you see that, and you saw that, every point in that game when he got to the cash location. Making a play on the ball. Very, uh, very nice. This this leads me to believe that he can play on the outside. However, he plays a lot in off coverage for Washington's defense. I don't think he's a cat that can play press. I think he, he just kind of lacks that physicality when it comes to um, really getting up on the receivers during the route. Uh, as a tackler, meh, he's a guy that's just going to throw his body around. That's kind of is what it is 20 percent missed tackle rate honestly not that bad considering his tackling style but i don't see him being a press guy the next level he's he's probably going to be sought out by uh defenses that that like off coverage that like their corners in off coverage however it's not like he's that explosive of a player either he while he's a very smooth athlete in like in the short field or like underneath he doesn't really break on the ball too well like he's just not explosive there's not that burst there uh and that's somewhere he could probably get exploited but on the intermediate to deep man he is he's a force and this is a cat that has using his last year of eligibility i think this is officially his last year i think technically he could come back because of the rona year <laughs> dang it uh, it allows him to return one more year at Washington. But prior to this, he he played stellar for Oklahoma State, where going back to 2021, he had his first start in the Fiesta Bowl where he had a phenomenal game against Notre Dame. And then in 2022, he was their starter through all 12 games. I think he had nine pass breakups that year. Just very solid I, I'm kind of seeing him in this like maybe early to mid day three area again because lim some limitations with the height, but the size isn't all that bad. And with that length, it's a little bit less of a concern. But Mohamed's definitely someone uh, to look out for in a also what's turned out to be a really, really good cornerback class. But we're going to keep talking about the corner position going to the Michigan game, uh, talking about Mike St. Ristol. Out of Michigan, they took on Maryland this past week. He he is a cat. I have a little further down my board, uh, but he had two interceptions this week. That makes five for the season. And whew, man, you look at the size. You look at the size. 5'10", 182. And it's like, okay, that's very similar size to who we just talked about, Jabbar Muhammad. But he doesn't have that length. He just doesn't. He, he, he just kind of lacks the ideal size to be a safety. And he lacks the length to probably play consistently on the outside. So you're looking at a slot only player, which is fine. The slot corner position is a starting position in the NFL. So I ain't too worried about that because there's a lot to like about this cat. He was formerly a three-star recruit from the 2019 class. He was uh, born actually in Porte Prince and Haiti and... His father, he's got a very interesting uh, background. His, fa his father was a newsroom director at a radio station, and he was receiving death threats back in 2000 during the ha uh, during Haiti's presidential election. That resulted in the family to flee from Haiti when when Mike here was only like seven months old, and 
he ends up uh, moving to uh, Massachusetts and football ends up being his thing. He was a guy that played on all three phases. He was Massachusetts Gator player, uh, Gatorade player of the year and ends up going to Michigan and initially was looked at as a receiver. He was mainly a returner and a special teams player early on and didn't make the transition to corner until last season. Like he, he had five, you go back to 2021, he had five starts at receiver. And then he converted to defensive back and had 11 starts in the slot. Was very solid. Go to the Ohio State game. He was phenomenal. Phenomenal. This year, it's much of the same. You're going to love this guy's range as an athlete. You're going to love the change of direction. Uh, it, just something that really sticks out on tape. You're going to love the aggressive and physical nature uh, he plays which with, which is kind of super ideal for the slot position. Like he defends the run exceptionally well. He's been really good as a run defender this year. 9.7 missed tackle rate. Natural born, born leader. Has a great nose for the football. Doesn't mind uh, the slot position where you're going to get you're going to get targeted a ton. He has a 50% completion rate this year, which is pretty solid. But still, being a slot only probably puts him in that, again, early to mid day three variety. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him in some people's top 100. But but I think uh, it's not like we're talking about a cat like uh, Jartavius Martin last year who whose ball skills were just ludicrous. But I am a big fan of Mike here. And then we're going to move to the offensive side of the football, going to running back Taj Brooks out of Texas Tech coming in at 5'10", 230 pounds. Finally got to get a look at this cat. And currently I got a fifth round grade on him. Uh, very good bruiser. Had a great day against uh what was it baylor uh no it was a great uh it was against not baylor was it baylor no it was central florida that's right that's right i knew it was a big 12 team Ooh. but uh good day there where he had 182 yards had a tutty as well and you look at him as a power back through and through yeah he's got great size big body ball carrier who can uh just E contact with his frame. I mean, if we're gonna like, I wish he could run a little bit lower because he's kind of already a little, little more stout at that five ten, which is good size, about average uh, for the position, but it is on the stouter scale of things. But he runs with a high pad level, so you'd like to see him get down a little bit. It'll allow him to eat that contact a little bit better, and he's a lot more shifty than you would expect. Uh, not just in the open field, but like in the backfield when he approaches the line of scrimmage when he's looking for those rushing lanes those holes and he attacks those holes once he sees them with urgency like good vision good patience and the best part about him being a part of texas tech is he's become a pretty solid solid enough pass catcher like soft hands i think uh his drop rate he only has one drop this season and probably like what only two maybe through his career no only one drop through his career so it's only the drop he has this season so solid he's one of the best pass protectors in college football like this dude can identify a blitz or where pressure is coming and help immediately so he's someone that could probably play all three downs if you need him to but him just not being a high-end athlete like there's uh, in terms of the burst the quicks the speed it's not high end he's a bigger body guy that's to be expected that's 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 gonna that's gonna hurt him that's gonna nick him a little bit but if you're looking for a power back that offers really good pass protection on day three he's gonna be one of the top guys on your list i i see him going in like the first later like, in the in round four or five it's kind of where i have him right now but uh someone who i expect to be at like a senior bowl shrine bowl uh someone who is going to be for the third year straight uh, lead in the Red Raiders in rush yards. And keep in mind, he in 2021, 2022, he was splitting time with Sir Roderick Thompson, who I don't think Thompson got drafted, but he was a, he was a priority UDFA for a lot of people. Uh, let me actually just check that. 
I'm pretty confident he was a UDFA. Yep, he went undrafted. I thought so. I thought so. Some people were thinking he might get some uh, back end love, but I was like, ah, this running back class is kind of good. Then again, I mean, a guy like Keenan Mitchell ends up uh, going undrafted. So insane, insane. Let's talk about some receivers. Listen, I know you love the NFL draft as much as I do, and you're going to want a nice hefty watch list of players during this college football season well go ahead check out my draft guide you can purchase it for only 30 bucks by venmoing or paypaling me links in the description it's a one-time payment and you get it for this whole draft cycle and forever and always technically it's a google spreadsheet so send me your email when you send the payment i'll get you hooked up you will see my current prospect rankings and big board my full evals and guess what it updates throughout the whole draft cycle so it's a great purchase and it's a great way to support the channel we're gonna be talking about brendan rice you might be, be familiar with the last name because this is jerry rice's son yeah that's right he had a real good game against ucla though they did lose that ball game did have a fumble in that game so not ideal but he had over a hundred or he had 147 yards he had a tutty in that game so very very solid uh, Rice was a three-star recruit from the 2020 class and initially was at Colorado for his first two years of his collegiate career. Transfers to USC, started 12 games last year, has started, I think, every game but the opener this season, and he's right now at about 800 yards on the year, but 12 tutties. This guy's a touchdown machine and first thing you gonna look at 6 3 2 10 oh that's some nice size yeah he's got a good frame he's got a really good catch radius like the the combination of length and hops this cat has makes him a very dangerous dangerous um 50 50 ball though that's not something he's been very good at this season uh and i i feel like a part of that is despite the length and the ability to be the first at the catch point he just it's just, it's just something he hasn't been consistent at like throughout his whole career However, very good straight line speed. He's really good at the top of routes, able to explode out of his breaks to create initial separation. Uh, and he's this year, he really put it together as a route runner, using his body well to out leverage defenders to create those windows. He also brings return experience, which is always a big plus. That's going to get you drafted uh, in the, in the on day three if they can play you on special teams. So... Nice on that, because I don't have a day two grade on him. I know some people might have him in their top 100. I'm not there with him. Uh, I got him more as an early day three type of player, but uh, not near, not not the smoothest of athletes. Like he's not that dynamic after the catch, not that dynamic in the open field. And there are times where he kind of struggles to, oh, he struggles just through contact, whether it's as the ball as a ball carrier or as a pass catcher. There are times where you can see him getting jammed in line. You're like, well, yo, what's up? Like, that size, that shouldn't be a problem. But someone I feel like who's starting to put it together in the late later stages of his collegiate career, I wanted to give a shout out to him because I really haven't talked about him on the channel as of yet. But let's stick with the wide receiver position. Let's talk about Xavier rest repo out of the you baby gonna talk about my hurricanes they ain't gonna talk about that louisville game but i'll talk about my hurricanes coming in at 510 198 had 193 yards had the tutty the tutty was super nice super super nice but this is uh, another cat that's pretty interesting just started getting playing time this season became like the full-time starter but Someone who is largely going to be a slot player at the next level. Doesn't have exactly ideal size and fun fact, doesn't deal with physicality all that well. And you're going to look at this wide receiver class because there are really good vertical slot threats in this class. Roman Wilson from Michigan. Uh, you got Ricky Parasol from Florida. And Russ Repo is going to be in, a, he's going to be with those guys in terms of these vertical slot threats that can do an outfield because he is a very, very nice athlete. It's just he doesn't have the physicality to do it on the outside. I mean, it's a big reason that this cat's been lined up in the slot 92% of the time throughout his career, throughout his 
career. He was only 5.7% on the outside this season. So someone you're probably gonna have to get creative with, someone that's gonna be really just a depth player at the next level, though he has special teams experience. I think he probably has return capabilities, though he hasn't been used a ton in that regard. But no, again, a guy that did play quite a bit of special teams, especially if you go back to 2021. So uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, this is a class. Like the honestly, like you look at receivers that probably won't play a majority of the time on the outside. There's like a ton of good slot options in this class, like Malachi Corley, uh, Jalen McMillan. You got uh, Anaya Smith, Mario Williams. Like uh, there's a ton of guys. Jordan Winnington, who's basically just a running back with ball skills. <laughs> Uh, honestly with him though uh, with him he, he's the receiver out of texas injuries have played a big part in probably why a lot of people have him further down their boards but this tight end position ain't getting love let's give it some love with jared wiley who had a really good game this week against baylor oh there that is, this is where they come up in this uh in this list he had seven receptions for 178 yards and two uh, T uh, D's. I think Jared Wiley could be a late day three, maybe a uh, priority UDFA. That's kind of the range I see him in. Uh, but coming in at 6'7, 255 pounds, was initially a Texas recruit, Texas player. He actually played quarterback back in high school and made the move to wide receiver, or excuse me, to tight end. And only had he had two starts his freshman season for the Longhorns, and then in 2020 he had one start, and then in 2021 he had eight starts. But was like, man, I'm gonna go see if I if if I could just get better production elsewhere. So he goes to TCU and was a big part of just a big part of that magical season they had last year. He set career highs in all the all major receiving categories for his career. Good on him. And when you look at him as a prospect, you're looking at a guy with a very good build, strong hands at the catch point. Uh, he's on on um, his tar like he's only has one drop on what like a hundred some career targets. He has the size that makes him a nice target in the red zone. Solid pass and run blocker. He's a very effective at chipping defenders before going out on routes uh he has a lot of special teams experience as well that can definitely make him viable w in, in training camp however he's just he has been limited as a receiver honestly outside till this season because i think all in all he's just a very average athlete for the position he doesn't really do much after the catch he doesn't really excite too much you look at him and you're like okay i can see him being like a tight end three in the league but that's probably about it but in this tight end class i mean i don't i i think he could get drafted i mean it's not like there's a lot of high-end top-end talent in this receiving class like once you get past guys like uh luke lackey ben sinnett uh jaheim bell dylan holker then you're then you're kind of like just looking right you're just like mm, maybe i don't take a tight end until the sixth round it's just kind of where we're at when it comes to this tight end class unfortunately but yeah this is the stock report we talk about guys whose stocks are up and we're talking about guys whose stocks are down let's talk about devin leary who all in all not having an ideal year at his first year at kentucky formerly of nc state and just didn't have a great game against South Carolina where he went 17 to 34 for 167 yards threw an interception. Uh, I believe he had a fumble in there as well. Former four star recruit from the 2018 class coming in at 6'1, 217. And Red, he initially was at NC State and he had an interesting career at NC State. He registered his freshman season, came off the bench against Boston College and in 2019 and had five starts. He was split in time. They, they were working a two quarterback system in 2019. And then in 2020, he had three, he started three games while 
split in that starter role, but unfortunately fractured his fibia and would miss the rest of the season. And then in 2021, this was the magical year for him. This is what put him on the mark on the um, on the watch list of a lot of evaluators. He started every game, had a huge win over Clemson that year. And we were like, okay, watch out for him in the 2022 class. And then he had a season ending shoulder injury in 2022 after six, uh, six games. And he decided to uh, transfer after that. Uh, as a grad, goes to Kentucky. And it just hasn't been great. He hasn't been able to rekindle the magic from that 2021 season even if you go back to 2022 it, it, it was kind of much of the same of what we what we've been seeing this year just not as good and it's not like he's a guy with high-end traits right he, he's gonna be like i think 25 by the time he gets drafted lacks kind of that he just kind of lacks <sighs> tools like the size is fine the movement skills are kind of whatever the arm strength is mid it, like for all intents and purposes this guy's a rhythm passer he likes to throw with anticipation and throw on time and when you throw all those out the window then he's kind of in trouble and that's what we've seen this season with with him in kentucky like he, he's had really bad games against mizzou against again south carolina this past week five turnover worthy plays uh, he had a very up and down game against uh, Vandy. So it's been a rough go at it for Leary, who probably finds himself as a UDFA at this point. Uh, a lot of people like think, think I kind of like I'm joking around when I talk about like Graham Mertz has really helped the stock and could get into that like late day three uh, potentially. And it's because we've looked at some of these some of these other guys like a Devin Leary, and it's just been like. Not impressive. It's like, oh, okay, it's allowed a guy like Graham Mertz to sneak up some boards. And then we're also going to get a lot of guys who may return, like your KJ Jefferson, your DJ Ui, uh, Ui Angalale. Uh, you got Quinn Ewers. You got, uh, what, probably Shadur, potentially JJ McCarthy, which, shoot, let's go ahead. Let's talk about the next guy in JJ McCarthy, who had a bad game against Maryland. This was. Is probably his worst game of the season. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it may have been even a little worse than the Bowling Green game. He had three turnover worthy plays in this out, and his adjusted completion uh, percentage was 58.3. Not an impressive number whatsoever. So, I don't know, unless he has a really good outing against Ohio State and then a strong performance in the college football playoff, this might be another cat we see returning to school because McCarthy has it. He has the talents He's coming in at 6'3", 202, but he has got a great arm. He has got a hose. This dude can, he puts a lot of zip on the ball. Oh, excuse me on the ball. He's learned to throw with touch. Um, he, he's just, he's dangerous as a runner. You've seen him get the keys to the offense this year and look good at parts like Michigan State game was really good. You look at the uh, Nebraska game was really good as well. The, and it just, his performance is honestly since that, that uh, since like Purdue, like against Penn State, really not his fault, right? Like he goes like seven of eight and they're like, oh, we can just run the ball down Penn State's throat and call it a day. And they did that. So he only threw the ball once in the second half. And then this game, just, I don't know if like Michigan got caught looking ahead to Ohio State next week. We're going to be doing a watch long for Michigan, Ohio State, and we'll get a front row seat at, at McCarthy. But some of the things that I didn't like about him last season, like his inaccuracy, uh, his ball placement, not always being ideal, kind of showed its, showed up reared its ugly head in this game so we'll see with mccarthy but i don't know i don't know if you come out because at this point it's like uh, i'm probably taking him at the back end of the first at best maybe look at him as a day two guy but i mean he he's got the makings 
it's got the makings of something special. We just, we just haven't, we just haven't seen it quite yet consistently. Like, okay, when the competition's bad, he doesn't have to do much. Yeah, we've seen it parts there, but again, Bowling Green, Maryland, uh, Penn State was supposed to be a be a, a good sample of what to expect, and we learned nothing. So yeah, that Ohio State game is going to be very, very intriguing indeed. But we're going, we're, I'm going to end the video on an upper. So we, we got two prospects that I really liked this past weekend. We're going to start this one with Ron Stone Jr. out of Washington State. Had a phenomenal game, by the way, where he had six pressures, uh, three sacks, he had a forced fumble that turned into a uh, a fumble six. I think his uh, teammate Brennan Jackson took it like 40 yards for the score there. This was against Colorado. Uh, and yeah, phenomenal game. Coming in at six, uh, six, what, six, three, 246 pounds. Uh, and he came to Wazoo actually at 615. 615 sounds like a time 215 215 pounds <clears throat> excuse me so he's put on 30 pounds over this last like five years he was from the 2018 class and it should be no surprise that this is a guy that okay big big question mark is going to be his play strength it's going to be his play strength and how how does he handle the point of attack? I don't think he's going to be someone that you can have out there as an every down player. I don't think he's someone that will consistently be able to set the edge. Matter of fact, you look at him like a DPR, which is a designated pass rush only. Uh, that's kind of what he is because he's actually a really good athlete. Very explosive. Plays with strong hands. Like he, he is. You look at his game like, okay, he's not just a finesse rusher, but he's got a lot of lot of uh pass rush moves to in his toolbox whether it's uh, a good bull rush where he can turn speed into power push pull move uh cross chop like, he's got some moves with him with his hands but he also brings very good bend very good explosiveness so it's kind of all the markings of a oh yeah let's get this guy in a rotation as kind of a situational pass rusher uh, and that's kind of where I'm at w w when it comes to him. Um, fun fact, his father, Ron, uh, was an offensive lineman at Boston College and played 13 years in the NFL. Uh, I think mainly for the Giants or the Cowboys. He played six years somewhere, but uh, he did win a Super Bowl with the Cowboys. But he bounced around to like five or six different teams. But So he's got a little bit of a pedigree to him. A little bit of a pedigree. But... Let's talk about Clemson's Nate Wiggins, who for a lot of people after this North Carolina game, he is going to be probably cornerback one for a lot of people. And I don't blame him. I don't blame. I don't blame him. It was a very impressive game. I know you're going to some people are going to look at, oh, he allowed five receptions for 79 yards. That's not great. But I mean, he was up against Drake May, arguably quarterback one or two in this class. Uh, and Tez Walker, who who has really done a lot for his draft stock uh, this uh, since being deemed eligible by the NCAA. Screw the NCAA, man. But it, no, it was good. He was targeted 11 times, and he only allowed five receptions. He came away with a very nice interception to to end the game the game ending interception he had a good pass breakup in there as well you saw the speed the ridiculous speed as he caught up to hampton on uh the the touchdown run he had a forced fumble in this game he had seven tackles he was everywhere he was all over the place this is a cat coming in at 6'2 185 he's a lawn defender and he's just an exceptional athlete and he's just looked very, very good this season. He's allowed a completion rate on the year of only 41.2%. That is extremely, extremely good. And when he does get the ball in his hands, like he's got legit playmaking ability. Like last season, his first and only interception last year, uh, 
turned into he turned it into like a 98 yard pick six it was utterly utterly ridiculous but he's already shown ball skills he's shown a lot more discreetness this season with his hands only being flagged one time last year he was flagged five times and he is one of the i think he is well, one of if not is the youngest corner in this draft class at least in terms of age i don't have anyone on my on on my uh on my nice express expel uh excel spreadsheet uh that has a younger age but yeah he's gonna be someone that could add mass he's stupid young if you're worried about the play strength you're really worried about the play strength and yeah he, he's gonna be able to add bulk but he's not afraid of putting his nose in the action when it comes to the run game yet again had seven tackles in this game though his career missed tackle rate 20.3 percent is a tad tad high but again when it comes to corners i'm more concerned with how they cover opposed to how they play the run and wiggins kind of covers good I'm just going to say, you know, he, he's going to be in discussion for cornerback one if he isn't already cornerback one. It was very impressive performance. But uh, that's it for the video. If anyone else caught your eye this weekend, let me know in the comment section below. I can only talk about so many prospects in this video, but it's been fun. It's been real. It's been real fun. But as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.